again, everybody. A warm welcome back to the Celtic Forever podcast. It's been a few days, well, a full week since we've been on. So, so it's good to be back. There's no Celtic, but there is John. How are you doing, John? <laughs> I'm all right. I was expecting a longer intro than that. I am good. How are you? I'm good, John. This, as I said last week, this international break, it really does, you know, drag in, doesn't it? It's, it feels like it's been three weeks, never mind seven days. It really has. It's, and there's still another seven days to go. So, um, how, how have you been keeping anyway? What have you been up to, John? Not a lot. I'm okay, but I've not been up to much. Just watching the uh, what games did I watch? The uh, Celtic friendly, uh, Scotland game. Watched the Ireland game last night. Uh, the Celtic ladies game on Sunday. Watched that. Uh, and every result went against what I wanted, Xander. <laughs> apart from the Celtic friendly. Yeah, that's the way it seems to be going just now. Into John, the results seem to be going. You know, against this, apart from maybe the England game, that was quite good. Obviously, no, the one yesterday, a few days ago, uh, that was quite a good game. So, uh, the one they got beat 2 1. Who, who is it? Was it Denmark? I can't remember who they were playing, but they got beat 2 1 anyway. Uh, Greece, wasn't it? Greece, John, they got beat by Greece. Uh, so, that was I quite... was that. That's who Ireland, they beat Ireland as well, Zander. Yeah, they seem to be a uh, decent team just now, Greece, don't they, John? So, um, anyway, let's park that now, John, because we've got news to get through. We've got um, Celtic news to get through, other news to get through. Bruni, which then we're going to do a quick season so far, John. We did promise that last week, didn't we? So we're going to do that. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, okay, a wee bit of housekeeping before we move on. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell as well, please, if you could hit that as well. Um, you'll get a notification anytime there's a new video or podcast. Uh, competition, that will return on Wednesday so, Wednesday, so keep your eyes open for that. The competition, correct score competition. For the Aberdeen game, that will return very soon. So there was no competition this week because there was no um, normal football, if you like. Um, no Celtic, so no competition. Uh, right, John, let's get right into it. Uh, right away, today's headlines, I saw that Schmeichel was getting a bit of a bad time for an error and a loss to Spain. A 1-0 loss to Spain. He let the ball go through his gloves, apparently. That can happen to any keeper at any time, John. Ah, it's just one of these things that happen. I wasn't aware of any of th- them results, actually, but there you go. Um, he's, he's a world-class keeper. I don't think anybody can get on uh, Schmeichel's back for the career he's had, Xander. I mean, one mistake. Probably had a few more over his career, but uh, there you go. Every goalkeeper's entitled to a mistake every now and then. Eh? Absolutely, John. It's just, it's just as soon as a Celtic player that makes an error or something like that, it's all over the place, isn't it? So... No, he'll bounce back to that. Not a problem, John. He's, uh, as you say, top class, world class goalkeeper. And um, we have got him at Celtic, so we're over the moon with that still. But uh, I've not actually seen the error, John. I just read about it. But it's supposed to no, be I've, I've, never, I've, I've never even heard it. I mean, like, the only thing that matters is the gloves will be wrapped around the league trophy at the end of the season, Zandera. <laughs> That's true. That's very true, John. Let's stick with the international scene then, John. Scotland got beat the other night, didn't they, against Croatia? I didn't watch it, John. I think you said you did watch it, um, but uh, defeat's a defeat, John. Doesn't matter whether you're unlucky or not. Uh, it's another loss, and I think I think that's something like thirteen or fourteen defeats in a row for Scotland. Oh no, it's not as much as that. Uh, I, I, I'm not keeping count, but it's not as much as that, Xander. Um, I, I was I was laughing at Michael Stewart saying that Scotland. Uh, the foundations are in place, they're a good uh, side. No, I, I, who's this guy trying to kid? The foundations are in place. That's an awful team. That Scotland team. They're absolutely brutal. That team needs stripped down and started again. Uh, apart from uh, players I would keep in the Scotland team, probably, obviously, Andy Robertson. I think he's world class. I think he's a bit one of the best le- left backs I've ever seen. So I'd yeah. keep him there, Andy Robertson, John McGinn. Apart from that, that team needs rebuilt, top to bottom. Yeah, it's poor, John. They've obviously moved moved up in the in this you know this, this league thing that we're playing in just now. They've moved up to the top group and and the and the competition. So it's going to be tougher games, John. And it's uh, John. It's fourteen a fourteen game winless run. As John, it's no it's no thirteen defeats, but it is a fourteen game. One less run, so I've not won a game in 14 games. Right, right, right. Is it as much as that? I didn't think it was as much as that. But there you go. If you've got the stats there, Xander, well done. But I, I didn't think it was as much as that. Maybe I'm just living on the, the glory days when we got to the, the Euros uh, twice in a row. But 
<laughs> that was a long time ago now that I'm thinking about thinking about it, you know. That's it, John, because this run goes back over a year. It's unbelievable. It's quite poor, and it doesn't get any easier because we're up against Portugal next on Tuesday. Aye. Uh, what do you think of Michael Stewart's comment about uh, the foundations are in place, we just need a finisher and we're complete? What do you think of that? No, it's very poor because we're actually going back the way, John. As soon as these you know, sort of older players pack it in, it's going to get even worse. So you've got your players like, like you say, Robertson, once he... He's not going long to go. Ages Robertson is on 31, I think, 32 possibly. I don't know. But, you know, you've got other players in the team that are, you know, knocking on the retirement door. Callum's just packed in his, his international career as well, John. So I think it's going to get worse before it gets any better, to be honest with you. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. I think uh, and these foundations are in place. We just need a striker. It's going to be one of the worst pundit, pundit comments I've ever heard in my life. That team... Is brutal. They need to get rid of guys like Ryan Ryan Christie, Lyndon Dykes, uh, who else is there? I know he doesn't start. Lewis Morgan, guys like that. Um, what's his name? What's the wee guy that's always linked to Rangers? Can't remember his name. I don't know. I don't know. He's, he's, that, he's, that, he's that memorable, that you know? Um, <laughs> but uh, the, the, the team's just. Lyndon, D Lyndon Dykes play, plays his game. And the English, ch no, the championship, the one below it, English League One. Yeah. Do you think that's suitable for a, an, an international team, the players from uh, League One? No, John, we're getting found out, aren't we, against all these teams that we're playing just now. So, in English League One players, and no, nothing against these players, by the way, but English League one, one players, League One players are not what we're looking for. When we come up against teams like Portugal and, you know, teams like that, Croatia, John. We're looking for uh, top class, world class players, if we can pick any up, that is, because it's Scotland we're talking about. Um, players like Callum McGregor, that's what we need in the team, John. But no, no, I can only see it getting worse, John. Aye, but the foundations are in place. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't see any foundations. You know, I don't see them. I just don't see it. Um, all right, John. Uh, just before we leave the international scene uh, podcasting, two hour specials for three days in a row on Liam Scales scoring a goal for Ireland. But it was good to see the big man scoring a goal, John. I didn't, I've still not seen the goal myself, but we'll have a wee tuppence worth on this. We have been we have been uh, admiring Liam Scales for a year and a half now, John. Um, and some people are just catching up, the looks of things. Aye, aye, aye. This is it. But I uh, Billy Gilmore, by the way, that's the player I was thinking about. Uh, All right, the, right. the one, the one I couldn't remember. Absolute dud. You know what I mean? A total yeah. dud. Anybody yeah. that thinks that that boy's a top class player needs to uh, get to spec savers because no, nah, he's, well, he's far. But same as every Scotland player, they're, they're, they're never going to have world class players in Scotland apart from Andy Robertson. But that whole Scotland team. I think they'd struggle in the, the Scottish Championship, let alone the English Championship. Yeah. Well, the way I look at it, John, if Billy Gilmore is the answer, I'd love to know what the question was, to be, to be honest with you. That's because uh, he ain't the answer for, for me anyway, Billy Gilmore. He's a decent wee player, decent enough, I suppose. But no, I know when it comes to international football, John, for Scotland, definitely no. Oh, no, he's decent. He's half decent. But they're going and on about him as if, oh, what a game he's having. I've not seen this guy doing anything. Made a couple of passes, lost the ball about 300 times. Uh, that, that doesn't uh, constitute an international cap for me. Uh, anyway, Liam Scales. I've not seen the goal myself. I watched the, the game last night with Ireland and Greece. I thought Ireland, I think they've got a lot of very good players in their team, the Republic Ireland. I think they've got a lot of cracking players in their team. A lot better players than what Scotland have got, for what I can see. Mm. Um, I think they were very unlucky last night, Ireland. So, but uh, big Liam Scales, I was watching. I was watching it to see him. I, I think he performed uh, pretty much. He was kind of average performance. But I think overall, Ireland, generally speaking, have got a far better team than Scotland. Better players, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Of course they have. You know, but. It's, a, it's about getting the team gelled as well, isn't it? But Scotland have had their, their wee bit of glory, John, getting to the two Euros. That's it, John. It's Unless unless you can magically turn it around for the World Cup, John, and it's a tough group in the World Cup, I, I just can't see it happening. 
maybe I'm just being a bit pessimistic, but uh, the results don't lie, John. That's the way I look at it. Um, all right, let's move on to the Celtic stuff, John. Right, let's, that's enough of that. Um, Bernabeu, John, he's close to a £1.8 million pound deal to FC International, John. So he looks as though he's, he's supposed to return in December. His loan deal expires in December, Bernabeu. But they're close to a deal, £1.8 million. So it looks as though Bernabeu is Bernie bye bye, John. He's off ski. Uh, I, I say. One of the boys that came in with a lot of potential, it never worked out. You can see that he's got some ability to be burn the bear, burn the bye bye, whatever he's got. Um, he's, he's a half decent wee player, but he's never going to cut it at Celtic, you know. Uh, the left back at Celtic's Greg Taylor, he's trying to push him at the team. He failed, and I knew he's got Alex Valley to try and push out the team. To me, personally, what I've seen so far, I think I've seen a wee bit more out of Burnaby than I have out of Valley. Yeah, he looks decent, that boy. He's, once he gets settled in, I think you're going to see a player there, John. Um, but uh, 1.8 million, it's a bit of a loss because we did pay nearly 3 million for him. So, this was all we're going to take a loss on Burnaby, John. Aye. Well, it's just as Burnaby, bye bye. Uh, just got to take it on the chin and move on, but. I, I do think still, I think he was a half decent wee player, but not as good as Greg Taylor. He seemed better going forward than he did defending, if you ask me, but uh, he maybe suited as a, a right winger more than a right back. Yeah. Or was it left, sorry, left winger? Left, yeah, left side, yeah. Possibly, John, possibly. Uh, all right, we'll move on. Uh, Joe Lewis, I think it's the, the big Aberdeen goalkeeper. John says that Aberdeen could do a Leicester. There it is, John, breaking news. Aberdeen could do a less start and win the league title. That's confidence for you, John, isn't it? What do you think uh, of Aberdeen players, ex-Aberdeen players coming out saying they, that uh, they could do a less start and win the league, the league title? I suppose anything's possible, isn't it? But, you know, they've got to, they've got to be beating Celtic first, so the big test is next Saturday. Uh, I think he should just uh, put his false teeth back in and shut up. You ever seen him uh, in the goals with his, 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 his false teeth out and all that? And then you see him in an interview with his teeth in. It looks totally different, doesn't it? But <laughs> I, he's got, uh, it's cloud cuckoo land comments at Xander. Uh, Aberdeen are never going to win the league. But, but I just, I don't know if any... Football fan in Scotland will uh, agree with that comment, to be honest with you. Yeah, I don't think anybody, even the bookies, don't think Aberdeen are going to win the league. But, you know, that's obviously they're, they're feeling confident, John. So, as I said on the last podcast, we need to put a dent in that confidence come Saturday afternoon, John, because that's um, that's one that we're all looking forward to. We're going to do a full preview of that, obviously, later on in the week. Um, but I just thought that was quite interesting, you know, coming up with statements like they could do a Leicester winning the league down in England um, it, it would take a lot for Aberdeen to beat Celtic uh, to pip Celtic to, to the league title to be honest with you um, um, ok we'll leave that there John uh, let's get into the Celtic ladies I think you, you mentioned it earlier on I watched that game John I don't watch many of the Celtic ladies game but I watched the Celtic versus Hearts ladies game yesterday that was one of the worst games of football I've ever seen in my life to be perfectly honest with you uh, and I think the Celtic ladies manager agrees with me as well Celtic can string two passes together right up until about the seventeenth minute. Then they started, you know, once they once they realised we're running out of time, the ladies started, you know, pounding the hearts goal. But it was all in vain. John, a one nothing defeat for the ladies. Aye, it's a sore one that, isn't it, for them? Uh, aye, it was a poor game. It was very, very poor. I switched it off at one point and went back to it because it was knocking me to sleep. But. Aye, well done to the Hearts ladies. They got they got their win over the line. That's a big result for them, you know. Um, but they've also beat the Rangers ladies this season. Uh, the Hearts team, you know. So they're a they're a half decent team then. Yeah, it was just it was a great chance for Celtic to close the gap. Went up the Glasgow City and Rangers drawn on Saturday. So it was a great chance for the ladies, but they never took it, John. So they they move on. I'm sure they'll, I'm sure there'll be improvements in the next game, John. Right. Uh, but we're going to move on because we've got a lot to get through, folks. Yeah, they were just after the back of a European result as well, remember, Xander? That's Tough right, game. John. Yeah, before we mentioned that as well, 2 nothing defeat to FC20 and uh, the ladies' first outing in the Champions League. Just um, just up against better quality in the Champions League there, John. 
I wouldn't say they were better quality. I think FC20, they've uh, apparently got a lot, lot of experience in the Champions League, unlike Celtic. That's their first time in there. I don't think FC20 were a far better team. I just, just think the occasion maybe got to them. You know, they, they're in the Champions League. Maybe the name Champions League gave them a wee bit of a fright. But I think with a wee bit more experience, I think they could compete quite well in that. Mm, yeah, yeah. we'll wait and see what happens in the next game because it doesn't get any easier. It's Real Madrid and Chelsea, isn't it? So we'll wait and see what happens, John. That's all we can do. Uh, right, Bruni, watch. Bruni's into the semi-final of the Challenge Cup, John. Scott Brown, our legend, Scott Brown, Air United manager. 2-1-1 into the semi-final, John. Um, it's just flying high. Scott Brown, top of the league and into the semi-final of the Cup. Aye, uh, it needs to start beating teams like Falkirk. You know, the, the, the main challenge for that championship this season is going to be Falkirk. They need to start beating teams like that to have any chance of winning it. But I look well done, Bruni, getting into that, uh, the Challenge Cup thing. I wasn't even aware of that, to be honest. I, n- I never knew there was any uh, Scottish games on, apart from the ones we've mentioned. Yeah, yeah, he's right in there, John, right into the semi-final, so... It can all be good, I suppose, John. He's, he's, took, his, he's took his team into right at a semi-final of a, of a cup. So, yeah, 2-1 win over Peterhead, John. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's just... We do the Bruni watch them. We keep an eye on him. We want to see what he's doing. He's still sitting top of the league, John, even though folk have their games in hand. Um, so, yeah, yes, as you say, he's got to start beating or even getting a draw against the, uh, the favourites for the league in the championship. So... Um, okay, that's Bruni. Watch then, John. That's that. We've, we've kept an eye on Bruni. He's, uh, he's just flying, and I just love to see it, John. I think you'll bet Celtic pretty soon. I don't know in what capacity, right enough, but uh, it would always be good to uh, welcome, you know, legends like Scott Brown back to Celtic in some capacity. I don't know what that would be, but if there was a position available, I'm sure uh, Scott Brown would take it. I know he turned down the... What job was it he turned down St. Johnson, apparently? Yeah, St. Johnson came in twice for him and he, and he said to him twice, no, he's not interested. So he's uh, he knows what he's looking for, Scott Brown. He wears his heart on his sleeve, doesn't he? He's going to stick that one out at Air United. Unless Celtic come not. Yeah, well, as you say, John, at what capacity would that be? You know, it's, uh, it might be... Two, three, four years down the line. So we'll just we'll keep we'll keep an eye on Bruni. Um, just love him a bit. So today, um, John, I didn't just before we move on to this wee feature I'm going to add. Um, I didn't know the pizza man Southgate had left England. Did you? I just heard that in the news the other day after the loss after the loss to Greece. That uh, somebody else was in charge. Of England. I don't even know who it is. I don't know if he's a caretaker or what. But I didn't know the pizza man had left them. Pizza man. <laughs> No, that's that's uh, fresh news to me. That's breaking news to me, Xander. I never knew that. Just you've just told me about it. Uh, I thought I thought he did a good job with England. You know, getting them to the, the finals of the Euros and that. I thought he was okay. What is it they're wanting? They're never going to win the World Cup or the Euros. So I think get to the final. I think that's uh, a brilliant achievement. And I don't know what England's fans think, think of that. Me personally, I think it's a big loss for them. Yeah, John, you've got to ask, what, as you say, what is it you're looking for to win the World Cup? As you say, it's, I can't, I don't get me wrong, I've got world-class players there, but I, can't, I just can't see them winning the World Cup. Unless he decided to leave himself, maybe it was his decision, John, possibly. Um, I don't know, but anyway, he's away anyway. He done brilliant for England, I thought. Uh, so, so you know, who knows what they're going to get next. You know, that was a defeat and a lucky one against Finland, John, went to, and over the last few days. I wasn't even aware of their results. I don't watch England games. I don't have don't pay any attention to that at all, unless it's the Euros or something like that, or the World Cup. Then I'll watch the games. But generally speaking, I don't watch any of their games at all, unless it's in a competition. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, John, we'll park it there. That's enough of that, right? Um, because I, I was reading a wee article the other day. Yes, I can read, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but I was reading a, it's a wee Celtic thing and it's players that are still actually playing that used to play for Celtic I don't know if you saw this John players that used to play for Celtic in the, the late noughties and early tens John so these players are still playing for Celtic right did you see that? No 
But I've run through some of them, John, right? Because it's quite, quite interesting. I mean, I, I can't believe some of these guys are still playing. Just tell me. Uh, well, right away, John, 36-year-old um, Kyle. But I'm Kyle, John. He's still playing um, in Israel, John, and now a second division team in Israel, age 36, still playing. So I didn't think for a minute Kyle would still, still be there playing football, John. I never thought he was that old, to be honest with you. I thought he was just a young boy when he left Celtic. But there you go. 36 years now, still playing. Good luck to him. Yeah, still playing there, John, at 36. Kyle, midfielder. And then another midfielder that played in the noughties, the late noughties, was Key. Remember Key? He went to Swansea. Thought he was decent, Key. Um, he's 36 as well, John. He's uh, playing with FC Seoul just now, the midfielder. So that's another one that's still on the go. 35, I suppose, isn't he too old, is it? But it's, uh, it's old enough, I suppose. Uh, Stefan Skepovic, John, 37-year-old, still playing. Still playing, still playing in Greece, John, in the second division in Greece. Um, FC Gianna, he plays for John Stefan Skepovic. Never quite done it at Celtic, did he? No, I remember him. Uh, Key, I remember him. He was, I thought he was a cracking player. Uh, Key, but yeah. I look good luck to all these boys still uh, pushing on at that age. They're catching up with Craig Gordon. <laughs> There's a few beyond it. Um, anyway, uh, next on the list, John, we spoke about this boy a few times. Koki Mizuno, remember him? Koki Mizuno, Mizuno Japanese midfielder. Uh, he's now 39, John. In fact, he's 40 in three weeks. Koki, uh, J3, J3 League, John, in Japan, the third division in Japan. He's playing at nearly 40. Uh, the winger, sorry, he was a winger. Um, Koki Mizuno, do you remember him, John? I do, aye. Is, was that no uh, a packet of noodles as well, Koki? Yeah, that's why we spoke about that. <laughs> the noodle boy, Koki. No, that was that. No, that was Kwon. That's Kwon as well. Yeah, but Koki, he's, he's the the second noodle boy we've had. Uh, no, I remember him, John. I think he came in around about uh, the time when Nakamura left. So he's still on the go. I find that hard to believe, to be honest with you, John. Ah, oh, there you go. Then uh, Nakamura played to a good age as well. He, he was in his forties. He sure was, he sure was. Uh, Thomas Ronya, he was in the two old, he's only 35. He plays for Helsingborg. Thomas Ronya, he's still on the go. Centre-back, done okay at Celtic, I suppose. So he's still playing. And Miku, John, remember Miku played in the win against Barcelona? He was a striker that night, if you remember. Neil Lennon in charge. He's now 40 as well, John. He's still playing for Metropolitanos. There you go, 39, John, for sorry. 40 he is, sorry. Still playing football, Miku. Ah, there you go, Miku. I've not got any uh, noodles for him. Miku noodles sounds nice, I know, doesn't it? Uh, it does, uh, mi- micro noodles. Stefan Johansson, 34, still on the go. He's playing in Norway. And Berget, remember Berget, John? He's playing for the same team in Norway. Uh, Sar- Sarpsborg, he's playing for the two of them, uh, Johansson and Berget, John. Uh, Johansson was a decent enough player, wasn't he? Berget, no so much. Aye, decent player, Johansson, aye. I, I quite like a wee Berget myself. Ham and cheese, maybe. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Right, OK. <laughs> we'll park that, right? Um, I like a wee Berget myself, actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> By the uh, way, not, none of them's caught up with uh, Craig Gordon yet. Craig Gordon's 42, Xander. Oh, has he? No, you need going to catch up with him then. Is he 42, is he? Dear, oh dear, okay. Ah, okay. He's, he's older than, uh, what's his name? McGregor, the old Rangers keeper. Yeah, well, I suppose the bills need to be paid, John. That's uh, that's the bottom line. Isn't it? <laughs> well, uh, that's how bad it was. You get back to the Scotland thing, that's how bad Scotland are. They had him playing in goals for them the other night. Yeah, that's it. No, um... No, the support beams are in place, John. We could Gordon and go with nothing to worry about. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, found, foundations are well set with that, aren't they? Uh, okay, John, let's... Why, do, why don't they just make Steve Clark the player manager? I know, that's it. I, I didn't know what position Clark played, but, John, it's spotted to isn't it far away from Steve Clark's age, let's be honest. He's just Steve Clark, 55, 60, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, Uh I uh, don't want to go back to Scotland, but John, things are not looking good for us just now. Um, maybe, we, maybe we need to um, drop down a few divisions in that Nations League and start beating some minnows. Maybe that's what we need. Aye, 
Um, Scotland are starting to look like the minnows, to be on- honest with you. They're right up there by teams like Macedonia. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know about Macedonia, but uh, it's just because we're getting beat with these world class teams, you know, Croatia getting to World Cup finals or say uh, Euro finals and Greece, uh, no, Greece, uh, who else was it going to beat with? A few Poland. other teams, yeah, Poland, uh, Portugal, yeah. Portugal and Poland. Poland, Poland yeah. They're, they're flying high. Teams are flying high, John, you know, but... Um, all right. Okay, we'll leave that there, John. Let's get into this then, this um, season so far. I'll be looking forward to this, to be honest with you. Because when you look at it, when it's wrote down on paper and you're reading it out, it's quite impressive, actually, John. Now, let's get into it right away. Close season. Uh, it was a one-each draw with Air United. Bruni's Air, if you remember. Then we got a 6-4 one against Queen's Park and another friendly... Funny result that it's a FIFA result that one, isn't it? Uh, then we went to USA, we beat DC United 4 0, we beat Man City 4 3. Just quickly rattling through these John Cars are friendlies, and then uh, Chelsea, uh, we beat 4 1 as well. So it was uh, quite, just quite a good close season, John. Uh, we're unbeaten in the, clo- the close season friendlies, every one of them. Aye, that was some uh, some late nights, wasn't it? Watching the friendlies in America up late at night, three in the morning before you get to your bed. Um, but they were well worth it. Really good games. I enjoyed them all. Yeah, it was good. And uh, it sort of put us in good stead for the, the start of the season up until now, to be honest with you, because we start to kick off the season on the 4th of August with a 4 nothing one against Kamarnock at home. Hitati, Scales, Kuhn and Ralston. Comfortable enough one there for Celtic against Kamarnock. Nothing to speak of. 11th of August, it's a 2-0 away win against Hibs, Coon and McGregor. That was uh, the first of one of McGregor's many long-range strikes, John. Aye, uh, McGregor's been good this season so far. A couple of dodgy games, same as every other player. When you say it's Hattie and Skills, I thought you said Tatty Skills because you broke up with all I heard was Tatty Skills. Uh, <laughs> back, back to the Burgettes. <laughs> It's <laughs> obviously uh, so talking with tatty skills. Uh, uh, aye, the season so far, McGregor's. I think McGregor's been. Uh, I think he's been brilliant. He's had a couple of kind of slow games. He's not made much of an impact, but generally speaking, I think he's been. He's played pretty well, and uh, I'm very thankful that he's quite that international setup as well, Xander. Yeah, we're getting the best out of him, I think, John. Um, now he's got one less worry, I suppose. That's the way he's looking at it. Uh, we're going to do a one to eleven, individ- one to ten. Sorry, individual player scoring at the very end of this. John wants to run through the results uh, for the season so far. That is so one to ten individual player scores for the season so far, right, John? So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, then we move on to the 18th of August. Another win against Hibs. It's a three-one win. Webs win against Webs. <laughs> it's a three-one win against Hibs at home in the League Cup. So that was comfortable enough as well. Maida scored a double and Kuhn bagged the third one there when a 3 1 win over Hibs. That sods into the next round of the League Cup. Then we get to the St Mirren game, John. This, the away game against St Mirren. We all thought it was going to be tricky, if you remember. We all thought it was going to be a tough game, but it was a 3 0 win against St Mirren. McGregor, McGregor with another outside of the box strike, John. Another brilliant goal for McGregor. Hatati and Alistair Johnston with their other two goals, John. So that one didn't work out like we thought. It wasn't as sticky and tricky as we thought. It was quite a comfortable afternoon, that one. Aye. Uh, these, uh, luckily, these games weren't that long ago, so I remember them. But I, it was that, that's, the St Mirren game was definitely one I was expecting. A, you know, some kind of maybe a wee slip-up or a tight, close game, but Celtic dominated it, didn't they? Just made it look easy. Of course we did, John. And uh, we were flying high, right? Right through the start of the season, you know. Uh, but this point for two point this point for two two points clear of Rangers because they drew the hearts in the very first game, you remember. So yeah, it was all good at this point, John. And then we move on to the, the first of September, the first Glasgow Derby. Three nothing one against Rangers at Celtic Park, puts us five points clear. First of September, Kyogo, Maeda and McGregor. McGregor with another goal. Uh so as you say, John, he's 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 contributing uh, by the goals this season, isn't he? But uh, just a bright win there against Rangers and just put them in their place. Aye, that's it. Back in your box after that uh, resounding 6 0 win against Ross County. They were all uh, doing the bouncy behind the goals and all that after it, all the team and 
big Clements and all that were all bouncing about, doing huddles behind the goals and all that stuff in front of about 300 fans. Um, aye. And then reality strikes a week later, didn't it? Come to the home of the champions and get totally played off the park and humbled. Basically just a scalping 3-0 going on 10-0. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it was... Just a great game to watch when it was never in doubt that one. It was it was a comfortable Glasgow Derby watch. Let's put it that way, John. I never broke a sweat. <laughs> me me I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fourteenth of September, there must have been an international break. So two weeks later we have a two nothing win against Hearts at home. That's when we first saw Engels. He he was set on the score sheet Engels and look both new starts actually on the score sheet Engels and McGowan. The new boys with a comfortable enough win against Hearts, John. I can't remember much about the game, but the scoreline tells a, a comfortable story. No, I think it would, that was a kind of one of the kind of sticky, stodgy afternoons, that one. Uh, but uh, we got the win over the line, that's all that matters. It, it wasn't a comfortable game, that one. I do remember it, but aye, the points were in the bag, that's all that matters. We march on. Yeah, I remember it now. It was Engels' penalty, wasn't it? So we needed a penalty to get it started in that one. Yeah, yeah, it was tricky and stuffy, John. Uh, apologies if anybody can hear a, a fan blower or a lawnmower or something in the background, John, and nothing I can do about it. Um, all right, then we get to the European game. Eight, 18th of September, four days later, we play Bratislava. Scales, Kyogo, Engels, Maida and Ida all on the score sheet. Just a bright night in the Champions League there, John, against Bratislava. Aye, that was a top night. Really enjoyed that one. That one will live long in the memory. Uh, I think that's. I think it was to be expected. I wasn't expecting five one. I was expecting maybe close, maybe one nil, two nil, something like that. But five one. I was delighted with that one. That, that's, that's one I might watch later on again. Actually, that and the old derby game three nothing. Yeah, it brings back some. Recent memories, didn't it, John, when you go through it like this? Uh, so that's us up and running in the Champions League. Great result. And then we get to the game where we both got a bit of stick from commenters for saying it would be a tricky game, a stuffy game. It was the hardest game of the season so far, John, against Falkirk in the Cup, the League Cup, 22nd of September. Ended up 5-2 in the end. Obviously, we scored three late goals. But, uh, you know, right up until about the 70th minute, John, that was a tough, tough game for us. Bernardo, either we two and couldn't we two in that one? Aye, it was just one guy that didn't agree with everybody Everybody else did. Um, but best team to come to Celtic Park this season, I would say, is under Falkirk. Absolutely, John. It's, uh, they just gave us a tough, tough game, didn't they? So uh, that was that one, John. That put us into the semi-final against Aberdeen. All right, John, we'll move on to the next game. That was a 6 nothing win against... Uh, so Johnston went it the away game, 6 nothing. Very confident, very comfortable. 28th of September, um, with a Kyogo double, we had um, Bernardo scored, McGregor scored an error outside the box, John. And Maida and Ado Ida again. So, uh, just, it was a good warm-up for this Champions League game that's coming up next, John. Aye, uh, so is the Aberdeen game. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a better warm-up. Yeah. But, Aye, aye, the season so far has been really good uh, domestically. Champions League, maybe, but obviously that thumping defeat we got, that was, that, was, uh, that was horrible. Yeah, yeah, that's it, Johnny. But to go to St. Johnston with a 6 nothing. the team is absolutely flying, but, you know, this is this Champions League again. Every time we play a, a top, top team in it, you know, we come crashing back down to earth, and that's what happened against Dortmund, the 7 1. Humbling, John, that was the only downside to the full season, to be honest. We was up 7-1 against Dortmund. So we'll move quickly on to the last game we played, which was a 2-1 win against Ross County. Not as, you know, dominating a performance as we normally get from Celtic, um, but it was away from home. It was up at Dingwall. 2-1 win the 6th of October, just last weekend, really. Uh, that was just, it was a... Uh, Johnston and Kuhn went to the score the goals, John, but that was just, just what we needed, just the tonic we needed after the defeat to Borussia Dortmund. Aye, and like we said last week, the international break, I think, came at the right time for Celtic. That was a horrible game to be involved in, but a great one to win. Yeah, exactly, John. Yeah, that's it. 
Um, but that's it, John. That's that's your season so far. Sitting proudly at the top of that league, Aberdeen in second, who we play on Saturday. We'll have a full preview of that coming up at the weekend. So, well, on Friday, actually, we'll have the preview for that. The Dons game, looking forward to it. Everybody is. I mean, I've, I've read so many comments about people being so fed up with this international break, John, and I'm, I'm one of them. Um, but before we go any further, let's get a wee 1 to 10 individual scoring, John, of the players so far for the season. Um, obviously, you can add your subs in this as well, John. You know, the players have came on and made a difference, etc. So, um, what are you thinking then, John? Oh, it's a hard one, isn't it? Try to remember all the games and how they performed. But mm -hmm. generally speaking, I've no complaints with any of the boys, to be honest with you, apart from the game against, uh, what do you call them in the Champions League? Dortmund. Uh, D Dortmund. Uh, yeah. But generally speaking, they've all been really good. Casper Schmeichel, eight. Mm -hmm. Carter Vickers has been posted missing a few games. Can only give him a, an eight for his performances. Liam Scales, probably a nine. Alistair Johnson, probably a nine. Greg Taylor, an eight. Cal McGregor, an eight. Real Hitati, depends who he plays in there as well, doesn't it? Bernardo Hitati. Hitati's probably been an, an eight out of ten player as well. Uh, Engels. I've not been overly impressed, and I'm going to be honest, I've not been overly impressed with him so far. Decent player that he is. He will come good, but so far, I'm giving him a six for what I've seen. Mm -hmm. Uh up front, Kyogo, eight. Daisy Maeda, ten. I think he's been the outstanding player. Maybe nine and a half, ten's a bit optimistic. I don't think it's very hard to give anybody a ten, but Daisy will give a nine and a half. That's as close as you'll get. Um, Nicholas Kuhn, again, nine, nine and a half, round about there, probably. I gave him a nine and a half as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bernardo, he's been half decent when he's played. Give him a seven. James Forrest hardly made an appearance, really. Six. I don't want to get through every single player. Adam Ida, probably a six as well. He's not really performed that well either. Yeah. Uh, the new boy, for Dundee, I think, um, Luke McCown, I think he's looked good when he's came on, but no played enough to give him proper marking, so I'll give him a six kind of thing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but it's hard to get through every single player, but if you mention different players, I'll jump in over yeah, to you. That no, John, I'm the same as you. I'm just going to mention the ones that they've made, you know, appearances, if you like, uh, made a difference in the squads. Uh, so we'll start with the goalkeeper, eight. Spike off gets an eight. Then we're going to give Greg Taylor a seven and a half. We're going to give Alistair Johnson an eight. We're going to give Carter Vickers a seven. We're going to give Scales a nine. McGregor an eight. I'll give Bernardo an eight. I'll give Hitati a seven and a half. Uh, Engels, I'll give a seven. He's no long in the door, so we can't really say properly, you know. So, seven for him. Kyogo, eight. Maeda, nine. And Kuhn, nine. John, so that's my first 11. Um, and then some of the subs that have came on, we'll have a wee look at Ida. I'll give him a seven so far, although I think he's got a lot more to give, Big Adam. Um, so, we'll, we'll look forward to that. Hopefully, that starts on Saturday's Aberdeen. Uh, McGowan, yeah, it's hard to judge him. He's only played a handful of games, John, so we'll give him a, a six. And um, just because of what he's done so far on, on appearances, he's, he's done okay. Uh, who else have we got? Yang, he'll give him a, he's not, anytime he's came on, he's still not impressing me, so I'll give him a four. Uh, Forrest, a six. Uh, Palmer, a six. And is there anybody else, John? Am I missing anybody out? The new boy, the left back, John, he looks quite decent, but he's only played a handful of games as well. So it's a six for him as well. But I think he could um, he could get a lot of game time this season, John. Alex Ballet. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sold on him yet, Xander. Uh, he's not done much to impress. He's also taking into account he's not had much time to impress. Mm -hmm. But he looks half decent. He looks half decent. So... Uh, I'll give him a wee bit of time through the season and then we can maybe put a better mark on him, see how good he is. But I generally speaking, the whole team's been really good, to be honest with you. Uh, started the season on fire, really. But I think guys like uh, Luke McCowan, Alex Valley, James Forrest, they're all going to be bit part players this season, I think, Xander, mostly. But 
I will wait and see what happens, but very early into the season. So far, so good. That's all I can say about it. Yeah, that's it, John. We're only giving it out what we think so far. Remember, folks, it's not an overall summing up of these players uh, so far. And it's quite high scores anyway, so there's, there's nothing to really complain about. Everybody's getting a good score, apart from the ones that have not really played much game time. Um, the other one was Trusty. I'll give him a, a five because I'm not overly impressed so far, but that could all change, obviously. Welsh, who gets a four, and then we're going to give... Uh, who was the other one I was thinking about, John? There was another Tony one. Ralston, no? Tony Ralston. Ralston, that's it, John. Yeah, Ralston, he gets a five as well. So that's it. That's it. That's my summing up for the players so far. One to ten for the season so far. Well, Trusty, I think... I, I quite like him. I think I think he's going to be a good defender for us, by the way, but I don't think he's playing in the right position, of course, using his left foot to play at the right back position. It's no right back, right centre back. Mm -hmm. And I don't like the way he has to turn his whole body around to make a pass. I really it makes me feel uncomfortable. But I can see he's a good defender. He's got pace, he can pick a pass when he's able to <laughs> with his left foot. Uh he's no bad going forward. So I I think he'll be a good defender for us, Xander. And it also, by the way. I'll give Trusty a, what I've seen so far. I'm going to give him a seven, actually. Because I mm -hmm. think he looks quite good. I just think if he was playing in the Liam Scales position, I think you see a far better defender. Um, aye, Andy Ralston, always solid enough, isn't he? Yeah. Give him a, give him a six. Doesn't he get enough appearances to make a decent opinion? Mm, yeah, that's it, John. Um... All right. Okay, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, I hope you're right about Trusty John, because you know we paid a lot of money for him. He has done okay coming on. You can't count playing against Borussia Dortmund, can you? Every player played bad in that game, and then the game after that, you know, the Falkirk game is, you know, the sticky, tr tricky, you know. But he did what he had to do in the Ross County game. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it gets a sort of lower score, a six, but seven for you. Um, but he's only played a handful of games, John, so it's hard to judge, isn't it? Um, and I hope you're right, John. I hope he is, a, he is a major success at Celtic. Carl Vickers, he should be back for the Aberdeen game. Uh, we're hearing good stories. He should be back. His toe should be okay for that one. And Greg Taylor should be in contention for the game as well, John. All right. Okay, dokie. That wraps that up, John, the season so far. What did you think of that? I, what did I think of the season? That's yeah. good. Uh, aye, aye, it's always good going through all the old games, brings back some memories, of course. There's a couple of the games you mentioned there I'm going to go back and watch again. So, aye, it's always good to go through the old stuff and we uh, mm. slight, uh, slight, slight nostalgia trip. Yeah, that's it, John. Maybe the manager are going to give him a wee score before we go. Apart from uh, Champions League so far, well, we did okay uh, against... Uh, Whoever that was, <laughs> British lover. Um, but uh, he's got to, he's got to change it up away from home in Europe, Xander. I don't care if he keeps saying I'm going to keep playing the way I play. Something's got to change away from home in Europe, or that's going to happen all the time. Yeah. Uh, so apart from that, Brendan's done a great job so far. Nine out of ten. Yeah, yeah, good high score for the manager. He's uh, he's he's got the players playing brilliant, isn't he? You know, we can't play superb football every single game, John. That's another thing you've got to remember. There's going to be games where the team are off it for whatever reason, John. That's always going to happen. So, you know, doing well in the Champions League, flying high in the league, still in the League Cup semi-final, John. You can't ask for any more than that. Um, before we get to some comments, John, if you want to do a few of them, it's just a quick mention on Lisbon Girl's uh, father-in-law, who's really ill at the moment. So, a wee prayer for him. He's, uh, Lisbon Girl does the poems for the the podcast, obviously, John, she does uh, all, of, all of her poems. They're superb. So she just said to me, she's worried about her father-in-law. So we pray for him. Um, he's not too well just now. He's gone through some um, hospital treatment. So good luck to Lisbon Girl's father-in-law, John. Um, all right. Uh, you want to run through some comments, John, before we go? Hi, everybody say a wee prayer for Lisbon Girl's father-in-law. Um, I we can all only wish him all the best, Liz Lisbon Girl. That's yeah. all we can say, and we'll both say a wee prayer. Just yeah. everybody in the chat. I know Roseanne will as well. She's always there for the prayers and stuff. So prayers out to Lisbon Girl's father-in-law. Um, and by the way, we never touched on the Celtic friendly match. Yeah, Jad, I don't know. I don't even watch it. So, uh, well, well, Lewis, 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 Lew
Sligo Rovers, who beat Motherwell two seasons ago, knocked him out the Conference League. Yeah, um, Palmer with a hat trick. I lose Palmer with a hat trick. Uh, lose Palmer, absolutely world class at that level. <laughs> um, so, I look well done to the the youngsters that showed up for the game, and a, a few of the French team players as well got a wee game in that. Uh, yeah, if you don't mind, John, run through some of the players that got a game because I didn't, I didn't even watch it or see the lineups. Wherever is there any players that you know are, are knocking on the first team door, if you like? Lewis Palmer. Just Palmer was at it. Palmer, Scott Bain, of course. He's, he's just we need to get rid of him. That guy's just brutal. Uh, I don't know why he's at Celtic. Um, but there you go, Scott Bain. Uh, the Scott Bain thing, John's thanks to the Champions League Scottish player. You know, so many Scottish players have to be in the team, so I think he's part of that. There's better Scottish goalkeepers out there than Scott Bain, Xander. Uh, but anyway, Scott Bain was there, Anthony Ralston, uh, Lewis Palmer. Who else was there? There was, there was more than that. Uh, Stephen Welsh, of course. Every time Stephen Welsh plays, we get beat. We, we draw games normally. But Thankfully, he was in the winning team this time. It's just, I just think he shouldn't be at Celtic either. No offence to Stephen Welsh, by the way, but I just don't think he should be at Celtic. Uh, so it was Welsh, Ralston, Palmer, and whoever the other one was. I can't remember. Uh, Palmer. Welsh, Palmer, Ralston, and Stephen Welsh. That was your four, kind of, yeah, if you like, good. four players maybe sitting on the bench warming it. Yeah, there's a reason why they're playing in this friendly, John. You know, that's that's um, that's why they're playing in this friendly. But Palmer's a funny one because we want Palmer to, we want them all to do well, but Palmer's the only one that's got a real chance uh making it and coming through at Celtic, John. So we just we know the guy's got bags of talent, bags of ability, can put in a good cross, can score a goal. We just need to see more for Palmer and that might help his case. I doubt that. I doubt that will help him get into the first team uh, playing against Sligo Rovers in a friendly. But uh, yeah, hard, I, try, hard try against anybody, John. You know, especially you say they just put Motherwell at the UEFA Cup last season, the season before, John. A hard try was going to do his confidence in the world are good. Aye, well, it do his confidence in the world are good. But when it comes to the first team, he's no got it. He's just no got it. I know he's got bags of ability, but. When it comes to playing for the first Celtic team, he seems to lose lose the place. He's uh, gets lost in the game. Can he do anything? Uh, I don't think he'll ever cut it at Celtic. To be honest with you, uh, Lewis Palmer, unfortunately, because he is a player with loads of ability. But uh, look, uh, by the way, Sligo Rovers, big shout out to them. Uh, the crowd that turned up for that full house, half decent uh, wee game, very stodgy, very hard to break down. They could have had a few more goals, Sligo Rovers. Uh, as could Celtic, of course, but uh, that was a half decent friendly, to be honest with you. I enjoyed it. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Um, as I say, I can't kind of comment on it, John. I've never seen it, so um, I'm just looking at that, John. Yes, last said, minute winner, <laughs> last minute winner, Palmer. Yeah, I was just looking at the bottom, the V thing. I'm just going to change that just now. The season so dull has got to be the season so far, isn't it? okay. How's that? that better? Yeah, that's better, isn't it? All right, John. All right, comments, John. Maybe we've got comments before we call it a day. Uh, did you look how to spell far up in the dictionary, Xander, eh? <laughs> <laughs> that's been took me so long. <laughs> yeah, clue. It starts with an F. No, no ID. <laughs> that's the big fat sausage fingers, John, with these V keypads on your phone, isn't it? It's... Every time you send a text, it's uh, if you send a text with 15 words in it and there's 10 spelling mistakes. So, <laughs> aye, well, listen, the comments are all regarding uh, obviously Collins, Collins' wife Michelle, who sadly yeah, Michelle. Passed, passed away. So, I'm yeah. not going to go reading all them out, Xander, because I'll maybe I don't want to read all that out because it'll bring back maybe bad memories for Collins or whatever. Or maybe I'd like to hear it. I, I really don't know. But what I will do is I'll give a wee shout out to everybody that left a message for Collins. Yeah, I think I think that'd be the better thing to do there, you know. Um, 
So big shout outs to Colin's uh wife Michelle. Uh Roseanne sent her, her wishes. Uh Kevin McKenna, of course. Michael McKeel. Um who else was there? Lisbon Girl. One club since eighteen eighty eight. Paul McEwen. He left his usual comment, he'll heal the Celtic and the Celtic women are well. They'll know that well, uh, Paul. <laughs> they just get beat in the Champions League and get beat with hearts, the Celtic women. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, who else left comments? Rosemary. James Doran, of course. I'll get a couple of comments in after this, Sander. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, Paul McCune also left his wee, uh, well wishes. Uh, and that, that's it, really. But I'll read a few comments out now because uh, I don't want to bring up all that stuff again for for the sake of Collins. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're all, we're all thinking about your Collins, and that's all the ones that gave you well wishes. And we still, me and Xander still wish you all the best, mate. You're well liked on here. So all the best to you, Collins. Yeah, yeah. Um, and keep in touch as well, Collins. And uh, thanks for that, John. It's, um, there's plenty of well, well wishers there for Collins um, and paying the respects to the Stuart family there, John. So thanks to all the commenters that, that, that took the time out to do that. It's very much appreciated. Aye, of course it is. Aye. And I just don't want to read all the name out. I just think it's, uh, you know, we'll just leave it. But everybody's left their well wishes for you, Collins. Yeah. And uh, we can only mention it a million times if you want, Collins, but I'm sure you don't want to hear it, pal. Uh, you can read the comments for yourself. And Collins has been reading the comments because he's left replies as well. Um I would just think it the right thing to do, just to tell who the well wishers were, give them all these shouts, and yeah, well said, John. Yeah, well said. Um, yeah, that's perfect. Um, uh, there's one for Lisbon girl who says she says, Could all the Celtic Forever family please say a wee prayer for my stepdad who just got the all clear after going through treatment for lymph node cancer? And three days later, he was taken into hospital for an MRI scan, scan and PET scan. He had, what's that? he had all of a sudden been having severe headaches and bloody vision. Uh, then his side, the left side of his face was completely paralysed. They found he's got got it in the spine as well. For goodness sake, Osman girl. Um, he's transferred to the Beatson and they've started the treatment. This has all went down in the space of a week. I'm gutty but praying he's going to get through this. Lisbon Girl, again, we can only say our thoughts are all with your stepdad. We all wish him the very best. Uh, that's a bit of bad fortune that he got good news then, suddenly followed by bad news again. So, uh, aye, I'll definitely say a wee prayer from Lisbon Girl, definitely 100%, as will Xander, and we'll ask everybody else in the comments uh, to leave a wee prayer from And, of course, we wish him all the best, Lisbon Girl. I don't know your name, but we'll definitely wish him all the best, and we can only pray that he uh, makes a, a full and healthy recovery. Yeah, all the best, Lisbon Girl. Our thoughts are with you, uh, with your family, pal, and hopefully your stepfather can pull through this, pal, and uh, and um, uh, we hear better news uh, further down the line, pal. So good luck to your stepdad, and uh, all of our prayers and thoughts are with you, pal. Aye, uh, Roseanne's already had the... Uh... She's already been in and wished Lisbon Girl's stepdad all the best as well. Rose, Roseanne's a, one of the, the blessings on this channel. Roseanne will always say a wee prayer and all that. Uh, and she's right in there. Yeah. Um, and she's said her prayers already, Roseanne. Thanks for that, Roseanne, by the way. Thanks, Roseanne. Cheers, pal. And uh, Roseanne's always there. No, uh, good, bad or indifferent, John. She's always there. She's uh, She's been there for day one. So, yeah, thanks, Roseanne, for leaving the where well, wishes for Lisbon Girl. Aye, right, thanks, Rosanna. Anyway, let's try and get a couple of football comments on the go here, Xander. Yeah, go for it, John. Uh, well, I've already read Paul, uh, Paul uh, what's his name? Paul McCune's out. He'll heal Celtic and the Celtic women are well. Thanks for that, Paul. Yeah, Paul. Um, try to sift through these to try and find one related to football. There's one for James the Boy Doran. He's always in there for the Celtic comments. Uh, yeah. James says, and this is regarding the Ross County game. It wasn't a vintage performance yesterday and a lot of the players were off the boil. But it's three points. That matter. And it's time to regroup now during the international break and come back stronger in a busy upcoming schedule. Well, I says that, James. 
international break, I think, came at the right time for Celtic. Yeah, for, for once. Yeah, for once I agree with that, John, because, and by the way, that's how long ago it's been since we've been on into it, but we're actually just getting the comments from the Ross County game, so post-match. So, yeah, James is bang on. Uh, if Sands to regroup and come back, um, well, you'll see how we come back against Aberdeen on Saturday, so uh, that'll tell you how we came back. Because you go remember, John, when it's just an international break for us, it's a break for Aberdeen as well, so all these teams are going to get to regroup, so it's going to, it's going to make for a very interesting game. And I'm looking forward to doing the preview of that on Friday, to be honest with you. I'm looking forward to that. Very tough game to come back to. Aberdeen players all fully rested. No international players. Maybe they've got one or two. I don't really know. But I think that goes against the team, Xander. Two weeks break. And then you're playing against guys that's played international football who are fully fit and up to speed. Of course it goes against them, John. But I think they would have played a bounce game in the middle of that, John, to be honest with you. Behind closed doors bounce, maybe. As you say, they'll have one or two that are away in international duty, John. But there's no way they're going to be lying idle for two weeks without kicking the ball, John. They're, they'll have had that. Um, they'll be used to that. They'll have something sorted there, John. A bounce game, even if it's um, uh, a team against the B team, something like that, John. They'll have that. Um, they'll have that well sorted. I'm sure they've done something. I, I they'll be they'll be up for it, Aberdeen. I watched them against Hearts, and I thought they were terrible. To be honest with you, Hearts should have absolutely scalped them. I thought Hearts were the far, far superior team. Uh, then they get a man sent off Hearts, and that totally turned the game around for me. Um, but I wasn't that impressed by Aberdeen, to be honest with you, the last time they played. Yeah, but I don't want to go on too much on it because we're going to do the preview, John, but what a marker that would put down if we, if we bury Aberdeen 3 or 4 nothing. Well, I will wait and see, Xander. We'll talk about that when it gets close to it, as you said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to that much. I'm talking about it now. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll park that, John. A uh, bit of a comment you got, mate. Uh, Roseanne says, poor Boyd, leave him alone, used to. After <laughs> all, he's not got any looks, no charisma, and completely no knowledge, and a face only a mother could love. I'm on the hoops, so, come on, Roseanne, that's a bit harsh, is it, no? Tell yeah, us to leave him alone, and then you get stuck in with that. <laughs> Does they have to be you talking about Tom Boyd? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Tommy Boyd. No, I think she means Chris Boyd there, to be honest with you. But... <laughs> of course he does. Of course he does. But, but uh, no, uh... <laughs> oh, Boyd, what a clown. What a clown Chris Boyd is, to be honest with you. Um, I think we gave him too much time, but, you know, some of the things he, he says is, you know, you've got to ask the question why he's getting paid a wage on that Sky Sports, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. Look, he's not a pundit, first and foremost. He's just a Rangers fan that gets to sit in the Sky Studios every week. That's all he is. Uh, and his punditry is uh, appalling. It's the worst I've ever heard. And that's no an anti-Rangers thing or anything. That's speaking the truth. You can hear ex-Rangers players. A lot of them are not that good. Some are no bad. Mm. Same with ex-Celtic players. Some are no that good. Some are no bad. Yeah. When it comes, to, it comes to Chris Boyd, He's, he just shouldn't it never be a pundit. He's just like one of these bitter, bitter Rangers fans that gets to sit in the Sky Studio every week. That's all it is. Yeah, his joy is, and he showed that he didn't can hide his joy at the seven-one Dortmund game, John. Um, you know, where's where's your backing for Scottish Scottish football teams in Europe? Where is it? Does it go out the window when it comes to Celtic and Chris Boyd? So why he's allowed <laughs> to continue on that Sky Sports platform, I don't know. But anyway, that's up to them, I suppose, John. It's not just that, he's just not got any knowledge about anything, he knows that absolutely well, John, John, that is no having knowledge, you know, having that, you know, reaction to Celtic losing in the Champions League, that's having no knowledge about football. Where's, where's, your, where's your concern about the coefficient placings, John? Where's your concern about Scottish teams in Europe? There's none, it's just a wee bigot, we move on. He's uh, eating, but we. <laughs> yeah. That bigot. He's wee, he's wee in the brain, trust me, John. Aye, uh, uh, aye, he's... Look, I, do, I don't know anything about Chris Boyd. The only, th- only things I know about Chris Boyd is when he played for Kamarnock and Rangers and what I see in the Sky Studio. Uh, he's a bitter, bitter man and he shouldn't be anywhere near any television station. Yeah. Okay, okay, John. Fair enough. Uh, totally agree. Uh, there's nothing else to say on that, really, is there? No. Uh, apart from, we need to look at his face every time Celtic are on that sky. So, 
you know, that's the only thing into it, having to look at his face, honest to God. Uh, yeah, but I don't like any more, any more comments? Uh, just a couple, uh, apart from all the condolences, there's a Lisbon girl who was laughing at Chinese scrapyard. Ah, uh, Chinese scrapyard at Ibrox, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, that's funny, isn't it? And restricted. Building a, they're actually building a restricted view. Superb. Love it. Totally love it. Aye. Uh, I think, I think what they actually done was the upper tier, what they done was make it a bit longer at the at the front. Uh, I'm not really sure, but aye. Just a joke of a club, isn't it? Really, it's quite funny. Still getting laughs at them after all this time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, why did it take so long as well, you know, to, to build that? You know, it's it just looks the exact same to me. Anyway. Aye, aye, it looks exactly the same to me as well. Apart from uh, there's no fans in it. There used to be fans at the Ibrox, now there's none. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I, um, you know, um, we're, not gonna, we're not going to do a Rivals Corner jump, but we'll maybe touch on that on Friday because there's a few wee things I had to do, uh, mention about them, but we'll leave that to Friday, I think. Aye, Liz Mangaro also says, when is the next pod, Xander? Well, wait no longer. Here it is. Yeah, you're listening to it. Here it is. Right now, the next pod is right now. No, John, I think it was a long time to wait between podcasts, but when there's absolutely nothing happening, John, we, need, we just need to, you know, we need to leave it at that. Um, we need to, uh, you know, what's the point in coming on? There's nothing to talk about, you know, what's the point? There's absolutely no point. Aye, well, there's still nothing to talk about, but uh, some people want to, uh, you know, they want to hear the podcast. All the regulars want to hear it, so uh, it's good to just come on and talk about something that gives people a wee podcast to listen to in, uh, in the bath or when they go to bed at night or whatever, you know. Yeah, that's it, John. Yeah, that's it. Um, and we can't go two weeks with it coming on, so we have to come on and, t- and talk about what's going on, so that's that's what that's all about, John. All right, any more, John? That's it. All right, brilliant. That wraps it up then. Okay, we'll catch everybody on... Friday for the big preview of the Aberdeen game. Looking forward to it. Vital three points. Just looking forward to it. As I say, John, I keep saying it, but it's it's a massive game for us. Beating them would be massive. Uh, we'll do the preview for that on Friday, folks. The competition will be on Wednesday. Look out for that. The correct score competition starts on Wednesday. Um, right, John, any final thoughts before we go? Uh, nothing, really. Nothing, nothing really to add. Just I know Scotland are playing on Tuesday. That's about it. I don't think I'll, I can't even remember who they're playing. Oh, it's Portugal, isn't it? Yeah. Um, don't think I'll be watching that, Xander. Uh, then again, it is at Hamden Park, so you never know. It might, might sneak a, a 3 0 defeat. Yeah, yeah, you never know. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, on Friday, John. All right, okay, that wraps up, John. We'll catch you on Friday, buddy. Okay, dokie, Xander. Catch you Friday, mate. Right, buddy. See you later. Hail, hail for now. Hail, hail, mate. Big Forever Podcast.